Hello everyone, Storm11 here. Today we'll be taking a look into the possibility of a severe weather slash tornado outbreak across the south on uh, beginning Saturday into Easter Sunday here. And let's go ahead and get started with the SPC outlook. This is uh, today we have an enhanced risk for severe storms across southern Texas. Meanwhile, you have a slight risk for severe storms for most of New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey. Tornado threat is pretty low end. Damage winds is there in same thing for the hail threat there across over Texas. So it's going to be a pretty interesting day across over Texas. Let's move on to day two. It's not really a big threat day on day two, which is tomorrow. Get a margin of risk across southeastern New Mexico in the two uh, uh, southwestern Texas. Day three is when things start to get active here. We got a slight risk for severe storms across uh, central Texas into uh, Louisiana with a margin of risk stretching as far north as Kansas. All threats are on the table. Let's move on to day four, which is Easter Sunday. We have a 30% enhanced risk region across anywhere from central Louisiana through south central uh, or southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, uh, portions of the Florida Panhandle and, and into uh, west central um, Georgia. And there's even a 50% slight risk that goes as far north as the North Carolina Virginia state line. Now, I'm expecting this to change a lot more. And I'm starting to see a bad trend here from the models here. And let me show you guys by forecast first. As you can see here, my enhanced risk 30% is actually a very large area and includes most of Alabama, good chunk of the Florida Panhandle. I think we're going to see this enhanced risk region get pushed a little bit further north because we are starting to see a trend from the models like the NAM and the European model. Uh, there's been a trend that is moving, keeps on moving north, the severe weather threat. And that's not good for areas to the north like Tennessee. Arkansas, it's not good for those areas. And same thing for Kentucky, uh, which I have several Kentucky in a 15% slight risk area. But the main focus is really just the south here. Uh, all threats are on the table, as you can see here for the percentages. There is going to be, uh, there is the potential for super long track supercells that could produce violent tornadoes. Uh, David Woods is definitely there. We're going to see a pretty good squall line of storms along that cold front. And there's also going to be some large hail of those storms as well. And, yeah, we're talking about long track violent tornadoes, possibly, Easter Sunday. This is probably going to be, this could be pretty memorable. This is probably we're going to call it the, the outbreak of Easter or whatever. But this is going to be a crazy day. Uh, for severe storms on Easter Sunday. And, and see the difference here? Uh, I'm going to show you guys the NAM model here. Uh, the NAM goes into the first uh, portions of the severe weather day. We're not focused on Texas that much. We're focused on the Mid-South where the worst of the severe weather is going to occur. And um, there goes a wave of rain about uh, Thursday night to Friday. But here we go. Your system is starting to pop up from the planes at this point. So this is Saturday at 18Z. So this is day three. And then you're going to see this storm here come off to your screen here. That is your warm front, I do believe, right here. And this is Sunday at 12Z. So you got very gusty, severe winds right now at this point. And... Here we go, 15Z. We, we got scattered showers and thunderstorms developing across northern Illinois. So those are probably going to be a few supercells that could probably produce a strong tornado. And there goes your low pressure system. Right now, your low pressure system at this point looks to be over Arkansas. And you, here's your trailing front here. And uh, as you can see here, that might be a line of supercells right here. Here comes your actual front right here. Not too far behind. So definitely serious damage winds, especially when you look up there into Tennessee. So that is really your future radar here from the NAM. And let's take a look at the supercell composite here. 
Also, those lap rates are going to be pretty steep. Uh, I, at least that's what I've heard by model guidance. And um, let's go ahead and continue on into uh, Easter Sunday. And as you can see here, your super soak of positive values really rises across um, Mississippi, portions of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Alabama. We got values about 26. Now, let me tell you guys something. Yeah, this is pretty ridiculous here. You got a pretty good curve. You got about 60 to 70 knots uh, of wind, which is a lot. That's a pretty significant hodograph there. And also, this is nearly maxed out at 10 for the effective layer. So there's a high chance if a tornado does develop in that area, it's probably it could be an EF4 plus, and that's at high. So and it's a pretty healthy uh, hodograph there. And you got squall on the storms there that can produce so serious damage of winds. And if we go a little further out ahead, out of those storms, it's probably going to show something very similar. With the holograph, and uh, yes, it does. And again, PDS tornado. So really, anywhere you click in these areas in here, there's could be a PDS tornado signature. And this is why we're talking about long track volume with tornadoes here, because the environments, the dynamics are there for a pretty good severe weather slash tornado outbreak out there. But again, the models are starting to trend a little bit further north, as you can see here. Some of these numbers are actually starting to stretch to the north, into Tennessee. And again, PDS Tornado, and that is a very significant holograph there. I mean, this is a perfect setup for long track supercells that could produce uh, long track violent tornadoes um, in here. And let's take a look into some other ingredients. Let's take a look into the mixed layer cape, actually. This is pretty much the best way you could take a look at to a uh, cape. It's the mixed layer. Really, you need over a thousand or five hundred, and you're good for severe storms. Have everybody checked this yet? And as you can see here, you got values about up to 2,500, which is quite a bit. It is. That's about as much as last night's storms in my time in making this video that went across Kentucky, Tennessee, several did the end. We had values just like this here and let's take a look at the surface space lift index here see how much lift we could get out of these storms here now really the question is if you live like further north like Tennessee Kentucky there you guys do have a chance for some strong storms as well uh, the question is, how far north is this instability or this atmosphere is going to, how far north it's going to get? That's the big question with this here. As you can see, you're pretty, pretty significant values here. And um, yeah, that's really our big question. How far north is this is going to get? Like the moisture return and all that stuff. And let's take a look into a different model here. Let's actually go to a different website here so that way we can have a better view. Let's move on to the European model. So let's start off with Saturday at 2 o'clock. Your low pressure system is currently over uh, Kansas. You also do have uh, some numerous thunderstorms across uh, Texas around the Dallas area. If we move on to 9 o'clock, that still continues. But this storm is eventually going to start to eject. And right now, at 11 o'clock in the morning, your low pressure systems over Oklahoma. This is a little bit slower, which is not good. That's going to give more time for moisture return to really kick in and more ingredients. So you do not want a slow low pressure system. And when you have streaks like this here, that indicates supercells. Let's move on to 8 o'clock here. <clears throat> then 12 a.m., Look all these storms here across Mississippi, Alabama, Tennessee, Arkansas, Louisiana. I mean, that's a pretty bad setup. And let's take a look at the instability. We have that tool on here. And this is 12 a.m. And you got still got tons of instability going on here. So here's 4 o'clock. Your low pressure system's currently over Indianapolis here. 
If you turn on Rain and Thunder here, you got a squall line the strongest severe thunderstorms anywhere from the Florida Panhandle all the way up into Kentucky. So this is something we really need to keep an eye on. And again, the um, GFS is a little bit of progressive with this system. And you know, it has a very similar track as well. I mean, look at them storms there as well. It's it's not looking good for right now. I mean, 50 mile per hour winds. If we turn on the arrow, it's a little bit slower. Look how strong those every winds are. I mean, 65 miles per hour. When you get to the mountains of the Smokies, it's about 72. So, not looking good. And, um, and again, like I said, this severe weather front might push a little bit further to the north here. At least that's what the models are trending towards, is the really pushing to the north, really. But, anyways, guys, um, let's take a look back into the GFS. And let's take a look at the Cape Index here. As you can see here, you got a lot of instability. I don't think it's that far north. Not as far north as the other models have it. So yeah, and we're also getting close to the NAM here to be like, getting close to that event. So it's all the way to out at 8 o'clock here, so... Again, it's just not looking good. Let's take a look at the flash intensity here of these thunderstorms. As you can see here, it's pretty high numbers there. So definitely got to uh, really keep an eye on this. States that, states that we really need to keep an eye on is Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, potentially Arkansas, and potentially Tennessee, and maybe perhaps Georgia are the states that really need to keep an eye on this. And we'll see if the trends start to go further north. If it does, it's not good for me because we just had severe weather uh, last night. And I did make a video for that. And it will be released, be released very soon later today. But anyways, guys, this is all I got for you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this uh, severe weather update. If you guys did like this severe weather update, hit that like button. If you really do like my channel, hit that subscribe button, hit that bell notifications so you never miss an upload. If you guys got questions about this, you can put the comment section down below. I will answer you guys' questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.